So now we have our sales forecast. The next step is to forecast gross profit margin. The first thing I do is calculate gross profit margin, which is in this case the EBITDA divided by revenue. Now you may notice that I have EBITDA here instead of gross profit. This is because I've broken out depreciation and amortization and put it into the P&L. Uh, in some cases it's, it's revealed in the profit and loss statement, in other cases you have to get it from the cash flow statement. Um, so we've got a, about a 28, 29, 32, 35% gross profit margin which shows the margin is rising. So what I'm going to do for right now is I'm going to assume that gross profit margin stays the same. This is a simplifying assumption I'll do a lot of in this model simply because we're just trying to learn the structure. So what does that mean? Basically what that means is that we create a formula that says take this uh, gross profit margin which is in line 87, AF 87 divided by 100 because we want to put it into percentage terms and multiply it times the amount of revenue and therefore we will get our gross profit. And we can do that all the way across and the result of that is that we can also know that our gross profit margin or our cash operating cost in this case is just looking at our amount of revenue minus the or EBITDA minus the revenue and that gives us our cash operating costs which we can look at here so now we can see that we forecast revenue then gross profit and cash operating costs or cost of goods sold is a result of that. The next issue we're going to have to face is the issue of depreciation. Now depreciation is complex. We've got to go down and look at our fixed assets in the balance sheet and see that the depreciation that we're going to get in the profit and loss is really the change in depreciation in the accumulated depreciation item in the balance sheet. So now I'm going to go down and we're going to build a section here for fixed assets and here we have it basically what you can see is I have the beginning fixed gross fixed assets which is the amount that we paid for or that McDonald's paid for the assets uh, the historical cost and then we have some additions so that's the beginning of 2009 in fact it's the end of 2008 and then throughout the year they invested another 2.288 billion in gross fixed assets which brought their gross fixed assets to this amount. There are times that the company will sell assets or reduce the amount of assets on their balance sheet, which would be a negative. We call these net additions, usually call them capex. So the next thing we're going to have to do is forecast the capex. Now normally we do this by talking to the company, but in this case, since we're just building a financial model, we're not necessarily talking to the company. I'm going to pick a number such as 5,000 and enter it across all of the periods. Now that may turn out to be too high or too low, but we'll have to put it in there and see how that looks. So what I can then do is from that I can get our gross fixed asset schedule because the 5,000 is being pulled down or pulled up from the forecasting section there. And so that shows that our gross fixed assets are rising each year by 5,000. Now the next part is to look at accumulated depreciation. We can see the prior periods ending accumulated depreciation is where we start for the 2009 period and then we have a depreciation charge right here uh, which increases the amount of accumulated depreciation and then there's others, other items that happen, maybe the sale of assets and things like that cause changes in accumulated depreciation but for right now we'll keep it simple and just call it other. Now what that gets us is our ending or year ending accumulated depreciation which we can just pull up into the next year 2010. So what we now have to do is figure out well what's our depreciation charge. This can be very complex in fact we could build a whole model on fixed asset uh, acquisition and depreciation schedules but for right now we're going to keep it super simple. How are we going to do that? We're going to look at the amount of depreciation in the P&L, right, which is AE79 here, the depreciation charge, divided by the ending depreciation for 2009. That's going to give us a ratio, we'll multiply it times minus 100 because we want it to be positive down here. Uh, it just makes it easier for us when we're forecasting to have a positive number. And we can see it's about 4, 3, 3.5. Three so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that at the same level. So I'm going to say this equals that and copy that over. The result of that is that 
our depreciation will come in at this amount. Now, in the case of the rest of the, the, the fixed asset, you'll often find cases where you'll have other and you won't know what is it and how to forecast it. For simplicity's sake right now, we're going to leave that other out of the calculation because we don't really know how to come up with that. Now, the result of this is that we can go back up to our profit and loss statement and we can pull our depreciation charge from where? Well, it's going to come from line 79 here where we calculated a forecast depreciation. That's going to allow us to complete the depreciation portion of the P&L. It's also going to allow us to put in the gross fixed assets and the accumulated depreciation, which we're also going to pull from down below, which you can see coming from line 76. And you can also see coming from line 81 here. So I'm going to carry these over because we forecasted them out. And now we've completed that section of our balance sheet and profit and loss statement.